Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Cody Cassidy, and I am the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator here at GuideStar. We're excited to have you all join us today to learn more about GuideStar nonprofit profiles and the recent updates we've been hard at work at over the past few months. Through feedback from organizations just like yours, we've made the process for you to share your organization's full, complete picture easier than ever. We're excited to share that with you. Before we begin, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. First, we've blocked off a section of today's event just to answer your question. As the old adage goes, if you have a question, it's likely someone else does as well, so we want to make sure to address any and all questions you might have. To submit a question, simply navigate to the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. Depending on your computer, it may not be showing up right now. If it isn't, simply look for the Q&A button near the top or bottom right-hand corner of your screen and select it to activate that box. Now, later, we will be doing a live screen demonstration, and this Q&A box will disappear. To reactivate it and submit questions during that segment, simply move your mouse to the top center of the screen, and the WebEx menu will drop down, and you can select the Q&A option from there. Feel free to submit those questions about profiles or how to update them, or any technical questions as well that come to mind as you have them. Lastly, don't worry if you missed a point or were unable to write down a note. We're recording today's event, and you'll receive that recording via email within a few days to watch as many times as you'd like. And with that, I'm happy to introduce my colleague, Jasmine Morrow, GuideStar's Director of Nonprofit Strategy. Jasmine, take it away. Thanks so much, Cody. Uh, I'm so excited to share with you guys some of the improvements that we've been working on to, for the tool that helps you to update your nonprofit profile. Um, we just think that it's so important to be able to share your full and robust story as a nonprofit. And so we've had this uh, tool for updating your profile for quite some time, but it's, it's great to have these improvements to make that process easier than ever now. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through some best practices, some on the ground tips for just getting your information in, and of course, uh, as Cody said, um, room for Q&A at the end. Um, so yeah, so we'll, this is our agenda for the day and we'll just walk through those. So I just want to talk about the nature of nonprofits. Um, we as the nonprofit sector are incredibly dynamic. We have a, a ton of different things that we offer the world and we can be seen in so many different ways. Um, our, our stories are full and robust and clear, and um, GuideStar is really dedicated to helping you to better share that whole, full, fleshed out story. Unfortunately, this is the picture that most people get of your work. Um, this document should be familiar to most of you as nonprofits. This is the uh, 990 tax form. So as nonprofits, it's the uh, financial information that we fill out and submit to the IRS. And for the most part, it's what the world sees of us. It's our document of record. And in a ton of ways, it's incredibly important, and it, um, it helps to really shine light on what a nonprofit is doing, but it leaves out so much of our full story. And so GuideStar is really dedicated to giving nonprofits a platform to share the rest of that story. We have about 7 million visitors annually who come on our website, and for the most part, they're looking directly at nonprofit profiles. And so we think it's incredibly important to give nonprofits the opportunity to share more of their story. And so the way that we do that is by offering you the opportunity to flesh out your profile, since that's what's most public facing uh, for an organization on, um, on GuideStar's website, and also uh, a lot of times just on the internet in general. We tend to be really high up in Google search rankings or any uh, search aggregator, those sorts of things. Um, and so it's incredibly important, um, not just here, but also through our 120 data partners, that your story be not just this, not just your revenue and expenses, but also your programs and your successes and the impact that you're having. Um, 
So the way that we do that is through our, our profile updating program, our, our nonprofit self-reporting mechanism. So all of the information that's there is information that you as a nonprofit report out yourself. So it's um, you as an organization are the biggest authority on the work that you do. So we have four participation levels, or soon to be four, right now it's three. Um, bronze, silver, gold, and soon to be platinum. And so the way that that works is we want you to be able to share your information at whatever level you're most comfortable, whatever level capacity you have, which is the reason that we've uh, stratified it out like this. So at the basic level, you're really submitting things like your mission statement, your vision, your leadership, contact information, um, those sorts of things that give a user or a potential funder a little bit more insight into the work that you do. You're also submitting there your programs. Um, next up is the silver level participation. So that's a little bit more about your finances. So that's uh, some of what you enter into your 990, like your revenue and expenses, but it's also a little bit more. So it's who your top funders are. It's what your top funding needs are so that we can help to, to share that information with uh, relevant folks. And next would come the gold level. And so that section is really about articulating your organization's theory of change. <clears throat> so this is where you talk about your impact that you're having, your long-term goals, and, and how you're getting there. So soon to come is our platinum level. So once you share your organization's full story, your leadership, your mission and vision, your theory of change, then you can get into the nitty gritty of how you achieve those, what numbers you're achieving. So this is quantitative results, um, what ways you measure the progress that you're making. And so that is coming soon and we'll have more information when that's coming, but right now it's just, it's on its way in and there are, there are tons more ways to share other than that. Um, lots of folks tend to ask for the specifics and so when you go on our website, and I'll be sure to show this in the demo, there is a section that has um, the requirements for each participation level and so there's requirements and then there's also just supplemental things that you can add. And so uh, those are great to know about and I'll be sure to share that. These are the specific questions that you answer in the gold level. So there's five questions and they're developed uh, in partnership by us, uh, BBB Wise Giving Alliance and the independent sector. And these are the five basic questions that a nonprofit can answer to really articulate their long-term vision and strategies for getting, for achieving that vision. Um, and so we'll talk more about charting impact later, but I wanted to give you guys an overview of what those questions are. A lot of times folks tend to be intimidated by these, but if your organization has gone through a strategic planning process, through um, writing a theory of change, you've done a lot of this heavy lifting already. And it's really just taking those strategy documents, those vision documents, and translating them into your, your profile. And a lot of times it's simply cutting and pasting. Sometimes you'll want to rearrange some words, but a lot of times you won't. And so we'll talk more about that. So I also just wanted to talk about some of the benefits that come with participating and um, updating your profile. So there are some tangible benefits to a updating your profile, so there's things like being able to display a participation widget on your website in the bronze level, which will link back directly to your profile. There's toolkit, there's also some really great tools from Foundation Center, and at the gold level, there's our premium subscription, which is a really powerful search tool. Um, and there's a, a ton more of these, but I think that what's even better is the intrinsic benefit that comes from updating your profile, and that is sharing your more full and robust story, not just on the GuideStar website, which, as we've talked about, has a large presence, but also through our many data partners. And so it's really a one-stop place to get your story out much further. Um, and so while these are really great supplements, I think that the overall benefit is 
just speaks volumes. <clears throat> so when, and we'll talk more about this, but to claim your profile, um, it's straight on the home page. It's to the far left. It's the first clickable section you'll see. And you just click the update profile section. Um, so we'll get more into the exact way that you sign up in the demo, but I wanted to give you a quick view of that. And um, another, when we're talking about benefits and this getting your information out, I think that that story is best told by just talking about our partnerships. Um, so we have 120 data partners who we share information through so that we can get nonprofit information out to more audiences, to funders, to individual donors, to potential partners. Um, and these are just some of the organizations that I wanted to highlight. Um, so one partnership that we're really proud of is Amazon Smile. So the way that Amazon Smile works is that um, it's a really great passive fundraising tool. You sign up through Amazon Smile, and any individual can sign up the way that they would sign up for, say, Amazon Prime. Um, and any time they make any purchase, as long as their purchases are linked to your nonprofit, um, the, a fraction of their purchase each time will go uh, will be made as a donation to your organization. So it's it's not that it's huge, but it's a really great passive fundraising stream, um, especially if you have uh, a large constituent base. And so a really nice way to get some extra fundraising dollars. Um, those checks come in about once a quarter, and it's um, it's been just a, a really great way, not only to raise a bit of extra money, but also to just make your organization a lot more visible. So these others, CrowdWise, JustGive, and Money for Good are all different fundraising sites. And they act differently, and so it's important to have presence on all of them when you're ready. Uh, so CrowdWise is a crowdfunding site that's directly related to nonprofit giving. So like an Indiegogo, like a Kickstarter, but speci specifically around charitable uh, organizations. Um, Just Give is another really great um, fundraising and donation platform, um, as is Money for Good. And so by virtue of being an organization that has a profile on GuideStar, your information is um, push out through those channels so that you can have a better chance of fundraising and sharing your information. And so when you update your profile, that information is also updated. So um, just one great thing about that is that you then don't have to go and update all of these sites individually. It happens automatically. So that's sort of an overview of the program as a whole and why we do this work. And so now I want to talk to you about the recent updates that we've made to the tool itself. Um, so far, we're, we're just incredibly excited to share all of the improvements that we've made to make this an easier to use, more intuitive tool. And so I would love to show you those pieces. So we're going to get into a demonstration soon, but just um, the things that we're really excited about are the fact that navigation is far more intuitive, um, moving from one section to another, um, hopping around to different parts of your profile is very easy. Knowing what section you're at, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, is very clear. There's also more opportunities to share your story. So there's more places to put your social media information, and that process is a lot more clear and easy. Um, and there's just um, a lot of emphasis has been placed on really making it clear and easy and quick to put the information that you're most interested in sharing out. And also, uh, one big piece of feedback that we got was that people were really nervous about pressing publish because they weren't certain what was going to appear. And so it's very easy to preview what your profile will look like on our main website before you ever press publish. 
So I want to, I'm going to share my screen now and show you, get into the lab demonstration part and just show you what it's like to go through this process and also what it's like to sign up. Okay, great. So I'm sharing now. We're on the GuideStar homepage. And so the place that you want to go is Update Nonprofit Profile. And so this is where you get to a landing page that pretty much tells you all of the stuff that I just said about how it's great. Um, and you can press any of these buttons, this Get Started Now button, or a little bit further down, there's this Update Your Nonprofit Profile. It will take you to the same section. You can click that. Yeah. And if you're signing in for the first time, you'll get this screen. And it says, you know, sign in or create an account. You're going to click that. And I'm going to show you the process of signing in as a completely new user, just so that you understand that process. Um, so if you don't have a GuideStar account, you do have to have a GuideStar account to sign up. Um, and that GuideStar account needs to be, the email address needs to be linked to your um, organization. So you wouldn't want this to be uh, Jasmine Morrow at Gmail, you'd want it to be at GuideStar. Um, so I'm going to sign in as a fully new user first at a nonprofit organization, and I will do that email address and a password. I got a validation response, so I need to make a slightly longer password. All right, and so you register immediately. There isn't a confirmation email or anything like that. And then here is where you would enter your organization's EIN number. It's important that you include the hyphen in your organization's EIN number, and then you would request permission. Uh, it usually takes one to two business days to get a response, and once you receive permission, then you are all set, and you can uh, sign directly in and start updating your profile. So I'm just going to sign out of that fake account so that I can go right into the real one and, and show you how I update, um, I'll just walk you through this section. So as a returning user, okay. As a returning user, I'm just going to go to this left section and click sign in. I'm going just from the home page. And here you'll see your dashboard. So from here, you could edit your form, which is what we're going to focus on, but you could also assign managers, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, look at your benefits, which we covered, and also look at your donation reporting. So the edit form link and this link with just your organization's name will take you to the same place, which is the, the landing page for the tool. So let's go there. And here you can see our home page for the, the whole section. So this is what we call the summary page. And this gives you some nice, quick, basic information. So up top here you can see that we like to consistently display your profile status. So if I have unpublished changes, um, there will be a nice little notice up here that says, 
hey, you know, you've made changes to your profile, but you haven't yet published those. Um, and there's a ton of reasons why you might do this purposefully. You might want to make sure that all of your ducks are in a row before you press publish, and that's great. Um, we just want to make sure to give you a, a little reminder. If you don't like seeing that, you can always press this X here. Um, so there's also some nice navigation that lets you know exactly what your status is for bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. So you can see here um, that uh, we're at the gold level. You can also see these progress bars up top. So once you've completed all of the sections, um, you'll get a little check mark. It'll also tell you your percentage of, of how far you've gone. So scrolling down a bit, you've got some just quick basic information. So you can always update your address really quickly and easily. Let's just save that. Okay. Um, so again, there's just more reminders of where you are and what sections you might want to update. So this is responsive to whatever section you're at. Um, you know, so this just lets me know that I can update my profile at any time, that platinum is coming soon, and it just gives me a really good quick overview. There's also a section specifically to update uh, any fields that are needed for Amazon Smile. Uh, Amazon Smile is a completely optional program to opt into, um, but all of the fields are things that are always collected anyway. But if you were just specifically coming here to update your Amazon Smile information, there's a quick, easy way to get to that, and you just click that Update button, and you're right there, um, and you can update all of this information. So again, there's a section to update your profile managers, which we'll look at in a minute, and to look at your donation reporting. And anytime you're lost, you can always click the live chat section. So I want to walk you through just a couple of basics. So uh, one thing that I really love is if you go to this update your profile section up top here, it acts more or less as the table of contents for the entire rest of the form. So any section that you'd like to hop to more quickly, you can do that. There's also a nice flow throughout the entire thing, but you could always just uh, hop around. So you can see here that there's basic information and sections that you can go to for each of them. So let's stop here. Um, one thing that a lot of organizations tend to need to do is to change their name. Either um, you just have a legal name that is not what you'd like displayed on your profile, or you've gone through a name change. And so that's easily done here through the basic information section. I could hop to any of these, um, or I could also just click this whole section and click update. So here you can see that it's really it's as easy as um, the name that's registered with the IRS. We don't allow you to change because that's just the registration name. But the name that you'd like displayed, you can just change to anything that you'd like. Um, so you can see that we like to put the, the comma in and have this all case sensitive. And so we, we make that adjustment here. Um, another thing, just while I'm highlighting parts of the form that we really like here, is that we've gone through and really worked on making all of the questions really intuitive. So this isn't a section just with a ton of boxes that you, you know, wouldn't be able to navigate otherwise. There's these nice, clear questions up top. What's your organization's name, telephone number, and mailing address? So you know what you're getting into before you ever get into that section. So if that's not relevant to you, you could skip over it really quickly. Um, another easy way to skip over sections is with this scroll or collapse bar here. So when it, the arrow is pointed down, this whole section is expanded, but you could also just collapse it by clicking that and you could move more easily through the form. And so, you know, is your organization known by any other names? GuideStar is what we'd like to be known by, so that's what we display. 
So I want to walk you guys through a couple other things. So let's go back to that table of contents. And I'll show you where an organization might upload their 990 or their audited financial form. So from this section, you would just scroll down and financial information tends to be in the silver section. So again, you could click this large update section, which would obviously take you to the whole thing, or you could click just financial documents. And so now that I'm here, I can see that this is the section where I would upload my latest audited financial documents. So I would click add financial document. Is what you want to do here is always select a PDF. Um, there's other form um, other file types that are allowed, but it is a, somewhat of a best practice to use a PDF as opposed to an editable um, .doc or .gex. Um, you would select here what document type, and you can, the only selection here is audited financials, but you do need to go ahead and select that. You'd select the document itself, um, and this is just a standard document picker. Um, You'd enter the fiscal year, uh, your auditing organization, and then press save. And so if I didn't have uh, financial audited financials to upload, you could just enter your financial information here. So you could manually enter your revenue and expenses and those pieces. That's a perfectly fine way to achieve this section uh, without uploading um, financial documents. So let me go back to that section, um, that table of contents section, and talk about uploading pictures. So coming soon on, on our profiles, we'll be able to display an organization's photos, which is something that we're really excited about. It's yet another way that you share your story. Uh, you know, the old saying goes that a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and so you can start uploading those now, and it's very soon that we'll be able to see those directly on your profile. So you can go to this social media and outreach section, click update. And I'll show you a couple other things while we're here, too. One, there's your website, your blog URL, and we'll talk a bit more about website in just a minute. Um, there's also a ton of different ways to share your social media handles. Um, one thing of note here is that you're sharing your handles and not the URL uh, where you would find those things. This is the section where you'd upload your logo, and then any photos that you'd like to upload. You just scroll to the bottom of however many photos you have, and click Choose File. And you guys know how that goes. So then you choose a file. Um, it will only accept sorry, JPEG, GIFs, or PNG, so it wouldn't accept something like a PDF or something like that. But um, there's also some size requirements that you'll want to make sure you're mindful of. And then I just click Save here. Oh, I could also add a caption. Since I forgot to add the caption, what I would likely do is delete it and upload it again with a caption added here on the side on the far left. So let's talk quickly about the saving section. So at any time you can manually click save here at the bottom.
Um, another great thing that happens is if I were to fill out this section not by hopping through the table of contents, um, but by moving straight through the, the entire process, um, so let's say I was at the very end of bronze. I could get to the bottom here and I could either click save or I could click continue to silver and that'll also save all of your current progress. And any time I was ready to publish changes, you could do it from this top section. You could also do it right here from the bottom. So just under save and continue to gold, there's publish changes now. Um, you can also go to this section here, confirm and publish. So there's quite a few different ways to get to publish. Anytime you click any of those publish buttons, it'll take you to this section anyway, because what you need to do is certify that all the information that you're putting in is accurate to the best of your knowledge and, you know, click go, uh, finish and publish. Anytime you'd like to, you can also click this preview button here on the far right, and that'll help you to see what anyone else would see of your profile as it is of the information that you've entered. You can see here that we're in preview mode and you can just scroll down and make sure that it looks the way that you'd like, um, that all of your information is showing up in, in ways that you feel comfortable. Um, so this is, for example, our impact statement from the gold questions that are asked and maybe I don't like this line break and so I would go back in and see why that's happening. So. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they somehow just accidentally put a little line break there. So I want to take that out. I don't like that. And now I'll preview and see if I like it a little better now. Click the impact section. It may take a, a minute or so for it to reflect this change, um, but it will eventually. And you can see it's, it's, it's a little slow and so it might take a minute. Um, but I will be able to see it in just a few minutes. Um, I won't hold this up though. Uh, another section that we're really excited about is the demographic section. So in addition to being able to share your organization's story about your, um, just it's another way to talk about your operations. So we've partnered with uh, the D5 Coalition to develop a questionnaire about your organization um, personnel and their demographics. So you can enter information here and the idea around this is that um, you can't advance diversity and equity without first measuring it. You, um, it's hard to move anything that you don't measure. And so in this section you put in your organization's basic information around uh, the information that we collect is on gender identity, um, race and ethnicity identity, um, LGBT identity, um, and a disability status. And so you could enter information for any of those pieces that your organization collects information for, and you can feel free to leave any of the pieces that your organization does not collect information for uh, blank, or you can also click this section that says my organization doesn't collect this information. Um, but the dimensions that we collect along are board members, full-time staff, part-time staff, senior staff, which is also an element of full and part-time staff, um, but we also like to, to call it out separately, and then also volunteers. And it, um, another section that we talk about here is just what tactics uh, an organization is using and strategies they're, they're using to address diversity in their organization. 
And so it's great to be able to see these for an individual organization and then also just across our sector um, and to be able to, to help lift this up in, in conversation and to start moving forward. Um, so one thing that we've been thinking a lot about, just moving on from this, is best practices throughout this, this whole process. Um, what is going to make filling out this form more easy? And also, what's going to make um, your profile appear more robust um, and drive more traffic towards you? So I've got a couple of tips for that. Um, so the first is that you want to include as many NPO managers on your profile page as you uh, feel comfortable. So what you don't want to do is just include one. Um, it's very easy to assign profile managers. So all you do is go to this section here, um, assign profile managers, and click update. The thing that's important to remember here is that any um, NPO manager that you assign needs to also have uh, um, an email address that re is representative of the organization. Um, and then you just add them right on in. So you can see here that we really like to follow this best practice and we have a ton of folks who are able to update um, our profiles at any given time. There's a couple of reasons why this is really important. One, um, because a profile has a ton of different dimensions. So there's mission and vision, there's financial pieces, there's lots of different places where you are going to pull that information from. And to be able to have an NPO manager who's already assigned, who can go in and add that information, who has that expertise around the, about the organization, is just is going to save you a ton of time. The other reason is that um, people tend to come and go. And so what you want is that your organization's profile always be accessible for anyone in the organization. Who's, who's available, and that it always be up to date. Um, so a profile expires um, after two years of, of non-update. So we always want you to, to be able to keep your information current and what you're sharing to be relevant. So this is also just another way to, to, to really help that. Um, another way to keep that really accessible is that in the NPO manager section, sorry for the zoom, uh, let me get out of there. In the NPO manager section, it's a great idea to include an info at email. So that way, um, if someone isn't reachable, there's always a way that your organization is being reached about updates for your profile, about as you're nearing your expiration, or um, we've come out with new parts of the tool that you might be interested in seeing, um, lots of different reasons that you might want to be able to always be um, accessible. But your general email address, your info at, or your contact at, whatever it is that you use, is a great way to do that. So there's always a default. Um, so I also wanted to talk about the website section. Um, So your organization does not have to have a pristine website of any kind. Any web presence is completely uh, valid and we, we want you to, we mostly want you to be able to express your web presence. It doesn't matter what it is. So in this section, the social media and outreach section websites, um, anything is fine. Your Facebook fan page is a great thing to put. Um, your blog section. If you have to, your LinkedIn profile uh, for your organization is uh, also a, another great thing to put there. So it's mostly it's capturing your web presence as opposed to a specific website that's dedicated entirely to you. Um, so anything that you want to put there is is completely relevant. That's that's totally fine, and we want to make sure that uh, nonprofits feel comfortable with that. Uh, so another thing I wanted to talk about is best practices for filling out the charting impact section. Um, so as I talked about, it's a lot of work that you may have already done uh, through working on a theory of change or um, a strategic planning document. Also, there's just a ton of resources. So independent sector has put together this really great 
uh, website resource center. So what this does is it takes you through one, tools and resources for each question. So if you haven't done the thinking on these sections just yet, there are guidelines and different tools, uh, different resources, things that you can read, questionnaires that you can fill in that will help you as an organization come to those answers. Uh, which I think is just great. So it's it's a really comprehensive way to to get to that. Um, another really great resource is that you can see specific examples of charting impact answers. So you can see them by cause area. So if you would like to see the way that another youth development organization handled, you know, question three, you have that ability. So the way that I got there, um, just in case I'm moving a little fast, is just through this subsector specific resources. And so you can just click any section and you'll be able to see an organization's charting impact and also just to see all of the other things that they're using um, to be able to get to those answers. Um, there's also great tips on using it further down the line. So using charting impact for grant applications, which is great because time is precious. Um, and as nonprofits, we spend a ton of time on reporting out. And so any time that you can use these tools for other things, it's, it's invaluable. So um, I would definitely recommend checking out this section here. Um, and then there's also a ton of great webinars that really help you to better complete your charting impact questions and also uh, better understand their value. Um, so this is this website link will be listed in the resources, but it's independentsector.org slash CI resources. And um, the other quick and easy way to get here is just by Googling charting impact and it'll always come, come right up. Um, but it's just a really great resource and I highly recommend checking it out. Another thing that folks ask a lot is just how do we get more people to take a look at our profile? How do we drive traffic? Um, and so I think that that's a great question and I, I think that happens in a ton of ways. Um, one, one of the more most obvious ways is that um, we, your, so, sorry, the Google search results or any internet aggregate search results, um, your GuideStar profile tends to be one of the top uh, returned results in that section. So it's just always a great idea to keep the summary section of your profile really clean and clear so that people are enticed to click on it uh, by that for that reason. Um, another really great thing is that we really like to reward organizations based on their transparency and their impact um, as opposed to things like their revenue and their size. And so because of that, we weight our search results so that gold nonprofits um, and then silver and then bronze are um, most relevant in our search results. So if you're looking for an organization that works in the arts and culture section um, and that's more or less what you put in in the search terms, what you're going to receive is of course all of them, but the ones that are going to float to the top of the list are the ones that have a stronger commitment to transparency. Uh, and so one thing that you can do to just drive more traffic is to be at a higher level um, in our updating system. So be at the gold level, be at the silver level, and that's a great way to, um, to drive more traffic overall. So those are some best practices. And I want to stop there just so we can get more time for questions. Um, so here, just a recap on best practices. So assign several MPO managers. Any website is great, even Facebook. Be sure to check out the independent sector charting impact resources. Got just a ton of great examples. and get to a participation level. It's one of the best ways to drive traffic to your site. Uh, 
Um, so, and then this once again is the charting impact question. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to q and I'd love to hear your questions. Sure. Thanks, Jasmine. Um, thanks to everyone who submitted questions already. If you have a question and haven't asked it yet, um, again, please do so in the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. Uh, and just a quick question that I'm seeing a couple of times that I'll go ahead and answer. Can I get a copy of this presentation? Absolutely. You'll get that in your email um, within 48 hours. It'll have a link to the recording and the slides. Um, so you can come back and watch that as often as you'd like. Um, I have a question from a religious organization, a ministry, I believe, that's not currently listed on GuideStar. They'd like to get listed particularly for Amazon Smile purposes. Can they get listed? That's a great question, and the short answer is yes. Um, so any organization that isn't currently listed on GuideStar, and usually those reasons are just that they didn't necessarily have to file a 990 due to size or being fiscally sponsored or something like that. Um, you can contact NPO Services, um, which is just NPO Services at GuideStar.org, and they are happy to uh, help you through the process of uh, filling out information that will get you a profile on GuideStar. Great. And so um, getting quite a few questions about fees for participation. Is there any fee to participate at any level? That's a great question. No. Um, so we are committed to helping the nonprofit sector thrive, and this is the way that we feel that we can do that. So it's, it costs nothing to participate ever. So uh, the way that you, quote unquote, would pay is just by sharing your information with the world. Um, that's all that we, we really want from this. Great. Uh, so moving on to some specific questions about um, once an organization has already claimed their profile. I have a question. I'm confused about uploading our own Form 990. Should we do that when it already comes to GuideStar from the IRS? That's a great question. So the reason that you would upload your own Form 990 is to avoid lag time. So if you wanted your most update information, updated information, um, you would go ahead and update, your, upload your own because it comes to you faster than it would come to us and be processed um, and put on the, the website. Um, so it just shows a commitment to having up-to-date information. Um, if for any reason that's not what you'd like to do, you can always just fill out the other financial information and that'll also um, help you to achieve the silver level. Great. And so a um, couple questions about some difficulties about uploading the Form 990. Um, so a couple of people have tried uploading it and I've gotten an error screen. What should I do? And I'll go ahead and answer that. Um, that the most likely reason is that the file size is too large for the PDF that you're uploading. So you'll want to compress that down. You can do this. You can do that using Adobe Acrobat. Um, or there's also lots of online resources like smallpdf.com. Um, you'll just want to save that file size down and try it again. And if that doesn't work, then again, you can email us at MPO services at guidestar.org or email me directly at C. Cassidy. We'll have my email address up on the last slide. Um, just let us know if it's not working, but it's probably a file size issue, so try that first. Jasmine, do you have anything you want to add on that? No, that was great. Okay, cool. Um, so our organization doesn't have an organizational email address. We're all volunteers and use our own personal email addresses. What do we do? Well, that's a great question. I believe that you can, when you submit, I would suggest that you write directly to NPO services um, and explain that issue, and I'm sure that they'd be happy to accommodate. Great. Um, how often should an organization update? Is it bad to update several times a year? No, it's awesome to update several times a year. Um, so the, the more up-to-date your information is, the more clear a picture you're painting of your nonprofit. Um, so your profile expires after two years just because we think that that is 
far too long to go without updating, but we would absolutely encourage you to update several times a year um, if that's the cadence that you're comfortable with. Um, especially as we add the section, the platinum section, which is going to be your programmatic results, it uh, would be a, a really great best practice to get into to start consistently updating, um, say once a quarter, say uh, once a semester, something like that would be really smart to do. Sure, and we have a question: um, Do all nonprofits using the org? using the organization email, you need to use the same password. And so I think that's talking about different NPO managers for an organization's profile. And so um, kind of piggybacking what, uh, what you just said, Jasmine, you can uh, use one organizational email and password. However, we'd encourage you to use multiple, including the general email address, um, a couple of individuals, just to make sure that um, someone has a chance to receive notifications about uh, your organization's participation level expiring or any other updates that's relevant, you want to have a couple of people on there. So you can use one and use the same password and just share that, but we'd encourage you uh, to use a couple a couple there if possible. Um, Oh, and one question. thing that I forgot to mention about signing up as an NPO manager is that any NPO manager needs to also have a GuideStar account, um, and so that is likely the password that you would use. So you would sign in through the general GuideStar account and then be able to click your the, the section that you're working on. Um, and so, yeah, those are all individual passwords. Great. Um, an organization would like to gather all of the information together first before they start updating. Is there a resource available to print out and have on hand um, to do that? That's a great question, sure. Um, so let me just share my screen again really quickly, um, only because I cannot remember the, actually let me just find the URL really quickly for you. But so there is on the, the GuideStar landing page um, a quick PDF that you can take a look at, um, and that'll help you to know what sections are required, what sections are encouraged, um, and I, I won't hold up the Q&A, but I'll be sure to, to send that resource out in just a sec. It's just a section of the landing page. Great. Um, let's see. The organization uh, achieved the gold level, um, congratulations on that, and they want to share it. So what are some ways to do that? And I'll go ahead and just offer one. Um, we have a hashtag going on Twitter and on Facebook and on Google+, Plus, um, hashtag nonprofit profile. And it's a really great conversation that a lot of organizations are sharing. So that's one way to immediately kind of share that achievement and get that out in the conversation. Um, you, we have some social media posts that I will send out in the follow-up email. Your participation level, of course, if you're gold, that's that's great, and you can use that. Um, so that's one way to kind of get some traction. Jasmine, do we have any other resources to share this achievement? Sure. So if you go to your benefits section, there's a whole outreach uh, toolkit that's really great to use. Um, and it has things like using Twitter, like creating a, a sample Facebook post. Um, you can always display your um, nonprofit seal of transparency on your website, which I think is a, a really great way to, to share that information. Um, yeah, there's a, a ton of ways to, to get the word out. Um, I would definitely encourage social media, but um, also any of your print materials, it's great to include that seal and, and those sorts of things. Great, and I think we have one more question. If you have a question and you haven't submitted it yet, go ahead and send that in. Otherwise, um, we'll just wrap with this one. Um, can an organization view how many people have viewed their organization's profile? So right now, no. Um, it's something that we're really working on um, developing an easy way for you to be able to see that yourself. Um, we, every once in a while, do that analytics. Um, but there isn't a quick and easy way to, to have a, a, a ticker um, just yet, but coming soon. Great. So stand by on that. Lots of updates coming to look forward to. Um, thanks, Jasmine, for walking us through this, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. We hope this event has been helpful and that you feel ready to update your organization's profile. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, 
Um, you'll receive an email uh, within 48 hours with a link to the recording of today's event to refer back to. And like I said, we have a great conversation going on on Twitter using the hashtag nonprofit profile, where you can hear from other organizations participating. Ask some there. In the meantime, please feel free to reach out to contact me at the email address you see uh, on the screen. We'll go ahead and advance to that. That's ccassidy at guidestar.org. Um, and also the email address is, uh, there we go. Um, that's me and Jasmine. And then our general, uh, our fantastic customer support team, the Guidestar stakeholder support team, NTO services at guidestar.org. Um, you can reach out to them as well. Uh, so with that, thanks again and have a great day, everyone.